I want to talk to you today about using the graphic organizer to begin your argumentative writing. You have clicked on the link, hopefully in Canvas, which led you to your Google account. Uh, remember that when you go to edit these documents, you have to go to File and make a copy. And I would put your name in there just so that you have an organization in your folder within that. So it'll pop up with the categories already set in place for you. And this is going to be kind of a sample from a student in my previous class that said her information. The uh, organization of this will help you organize your writing. So the first thing it says is that it's your introductory paragraph. You want to explain your topic, give some background information, and provide a thesis statement. And your thesis statement is going to be the position on the topic. And the topic that you have is the embryonic stem cell research. Should the U.S. government fund embryonic stem cell research? Remember, in argumentative writing, you always need to take a side. You might be for it, you might be against it, just pick a side. If you don't care, flip a coin. To click on these, or to actually write on these, you just click on the box and you can go ahead and type anything in here. I'm going to paste in the previous student's introduction from her graphic organizer. So this is what my previous student wrote. Um, sort of just a way to get her ideas out there. I'm not going to read this to you. I'm going to give you some time here on the paper while I'm reading that you can read through it. Basically she outlines the position. She kind of gives some background information on policy in the United States currently and previously. And then she states her thesis statement in a sentence. She says, however unpopular a subject today Embryonic stem cell research should be federally funded because of the overwhelming potential for its uses to treat vast multitudes of diseases and improve the health of millions of people. So what comes next then is the support for her thesis. Why must this be federally funded? So here she has some reasons and notice she's not writing in complete sentences, she's just kind of getting her ideas out there. You're going to take this information and develop them into paragraphs. It's just a way to give you an idea. So she says they can adapt to any kind of cell. And then she goes to define the term pluripotent that she found in one of her essays. And she uses the Webster Dictionary to define this. Then she also further talks about why being pluripotent is important and what it can do. And she basically um, outlines that with the ability to become any type of cell, you can treat a range variety of diseases, damaged cells, or you can repair injured cells. And here she has a note that she's going to use Jim Cohan's article and be able to cite sources from him. These other boxes are also writable, so you can put in reasons number two and reasons number three to give support of those reasons. Remember definitions, facts, statistics, and quotes work really well. This is the first part of your essay, the introduction, and these are going to become the bodies of your paragraph. The next piece that you have is the page two, and that has a really important part of argumentative writing, and that is the counterclaim. The counterclaim is basically the argument of your opposition. So you want to acknowledge the counterclaim and then rebuke the counterclaim. So here she says, um, if she's for it, a big counterclaim argument against embryonic stem cells research is that you're destroying an embryo. So she acknowledges the counterclaim, but then she rebuttals with, hey, people are misinformed. These are donated embryos that would otherwise be discarded in the trash bin. So she's going to make a case for saying, why wouldn't we use these? The next and final piece is your concluding statement, and that's when you kind of wrap up your entire writing. It's okay to not have this completed. You want to wait until you have the body of your paragraphs and your counterclaim paragraphs completely done, and then you can put in this concluding paragraph. So work on the other pieces. Definitely put the counterclaim and the rebuttal in here, but it's okay to wait till the very end for your concluding piece. If you kind of have an idea of a call to action that you want the audience to take, maybe you want them to call their congressman to not support this. Maybe you want them to offer some money or donate some money. Maybe you want them to educate someone else about them. Maybe you want them to do further research. If you kind of have an idea of what you want the audience to do with the knowledge you've given them, you can put that in here to give you an idea.